Don in London, hello. July 3rd, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both in my case. My substance, alcohol, so alcoholic in recovery for some time, but one day at a time, always. And, sub and, peep and substance, that's the alcohol, and behaviour around people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things, having the right things and being a bit of a pain in the neck about it, I suspect. Trying to be whatever I thought you wanted me to be so I would fit in. These days, probably doing similar things around people, places and things, but not trying to please people in the sense that I need be like the way they want me to be. I can just be me. And then the right people, the right place and the right things will happen in time. It's not an overnight success in my case. and. I've had a lot of help along the way from family, friends, community, professionals, including medical people, who kept me alive long enough to get to a place of clarity that I could not recover or be in recovery without the help of other people. So the lights went on, if you like. I realised how much worse could it get? And the answer was, not much worse. And how could I get help? Well dried out and an attempt made with the help of fellowship and that fellowship is and remains Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will. Certainly not a spokesperson but the fellowship, if I didn't talk about AA as part of what goes on in my life then it would be a sham not to discuss how it helped me keep sober one day at a time and the people therein after all, the fellowship is made up of people, and I'll explain why and how from the AA preamble shared at every meeting I go to. But the most important thing is, everyone is unique and authentic, and I know I say this quite often. It doesn't mean we're special and different, but we're in a unique, authentic place in our lives. And if we are able to see the reality of our situation, maybe we are able, then, to move ahead, making the best choice as life is today. So here is the AA preamble. <clears throat> then some thoughts about the last day or so and uh, maybe a reading from the Fellowship Big Book about the spiritual experience which is key to my recovery and key to helping me understand how to live. So, what is AA? This is the AA preamble shared at every meeting. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. And that's it. Share experience, strength and hope and help others. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. So when it says there is only one requirement for membership, a desire to stop drinking, there are no rules, laws or regulations which hold a person to a particular way of living. It's about getting sober, a desire to be sober. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to be engaged in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. And this video is not about the fellowship as an organisation even though it's not an organisation, it's a society, basically. It's not me per portraying AA as it is. It's me sharing how AA helps me. So AA wouldn't endorse these videos, no way. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety, which is why I do this. So I needed to find a way out of drink substance abuse and behavioural addictions around people, places and things, trying to be whatever you wanted me to be, and still trying to be me, which was quite impossible. So gently, day by day, I learned how to stop drinking, I had a desire to stop, a reluctant desire to stop drinking, and a need to find out how to be sober. So the greatest number of people who could get together and talk about it is under the umbrella of meetings within the Fellowship of AA and that's where I went and I stayed around to find out how people live life with freedom to choose on a daily basis 
given life as it is today. It doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean we're all going to be stepfoot robot type people adhering to a particular way of living. We're not going to be Puritans. We're not going to be the anything but the people we can be. Unique, authentic, in the sense of being in this one moment with all the experience we have, trying to be authentic, live real, live real life. And that's how it works for me. <coughs> so I try my best, and sometimes I find that I get serenity, and sometimes I get uh, a pain in the neck caused by me, mainly. Because if I conduct myself reasonably well, I need not feel under any pressure to be anything but myself. The daily reading, which comes in the Daily Reflections book, is all about experience being our best teacher for July 3rd. It says, being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, or good conscience, it is not probable that we are going to be inspired at all times. And that comes from the big book of AA. Some say that experience is the best teacher, but I believe that experience is the only teacher. I have been able to learn God's love for me only by the experience of my dependence on that love. At first I could not be sure of his direction in my life, but now I see that if I am to be bold enough to ask for his guidance, I must act as if he provided it. I frequently ask God to help me under that. Remember that he has a path for me. And I guess I sort of go along with that, but you know, I'm still learning, I can't describe God. What I do know is it's the God we come to understand for ourselves, if any, or simply good conscience, which helps us, guide us. And good conscience is informed, in my case, by the wisdom and experience of people around me, inside and outside of fellowship. So if I have a better understanding and grasp of the good of life, good conscience, I have a good guide. There is an inner voice which says, should I be doing this or should I not be doing this? Should, should I be standing here and listening or should I be going and getting on with life all those things go on but it's asking myself to be open to the wisdom of the world and say in good conscience and, and contingent on the day I ask for help then I have a better opportunity to live as best I can but not at the expense of other people or putting them down so how am I feeling today this is me today, July 3rd. I feel better for a meeting yesterday. Discussion about how to help the newcomer and how to deal with our feelings, how to keep the program fresh in our minds, and the reading of the spiritual experience always helps me. And, <coughs> yes, the spiritual experience is part of the meeting I go to on a Saturday, and it's quite important to me because it sums up what I believe works in recovery. It's not rocket science and it's not tying me down to have a perception of God which is the same as anybody else's. A perception that I'm not God is good enough and that good conscience can be acquired with wisdom as life goes by and we learn from other people what's good. I think most people are inherently good. I feel that way. And then we're, we're always treading on each other's toes and that's the, the gift of life really it is because we will always tread on each other's toes to an extent and then we learn what the boundaries are learn how to live in harmony how to be a part of something bigger than us that's how it works for me mm. and sometimes it works that way for everybody else too but not my way it's not my way or the highway it's probably the, not my way it's the good way <coughs> and I need to keep on learning what the good way is but this is the spiritual experience from this book and I share it because it's important to me and this Saturday meeting not far from where I live is good the spiritual experience the terms spiritual experience and spiritual awakening are used many times in this book which upon careful reading shows that the personality change sufficient to bring about recovery from alcoholism has manifested itself among us in many different forms. So there isn't one way to do life, and there is not one way to have a, a spiritual experience. Indeed, it will be the way that happens for you, which is unique and, and authentic to you. 
Yet it is true that our first printing gave many readers the impression that these personality changes or religious experiences must have been must be in the nature of a sudden and spectacular upheaval. Happily for everyone, this conclusion is erroneous or not right. In the first few chapters, a number of sudden revolutionary changes are described. Though it was not our intention to create such an impression, many alcoholics have nevertheless concluded that in order to recover, they must acquire an immediate and overwhelming God consciousness followed at once by a vast change in feeling and outlook. Among our rapidly growing membership of thousands of alcoholics, such transformations, though frequent, are by no means the rule. Most of our experiences are what the psychologist William James calls the educational variety, because they develop slowly over a period of time. Quite often, friends of the newcomer are aware of the difference long before he is himself. He finally realises that he has undergone a profound alteration in, it, in his reaction to life, that such a change could hardly have been brought about by himself alone. We, what often takes place in a few months could seldom have, have been accomplished by years of self-discipline. With few exceptions, our members find they have tapped an unsuspected inner resource which they presently identify with their own conception of a power greater than themselves. Most of us think this awareness of a power greater than ourselves is the essence of spiritual experience. It's anything outside of us, some describe. Our more religious members call it God Consciousness but it doesn't have to be a religious experience. Most emphatically, we wish, and that was me interjecting there, most emphatically, we wish to say that any alcoholic capable of honestly facing his problems in the light of our experience can recover, provided he does not close his mind to all spiritual concepts. He can only be defeated by an attitude of intolerance or belligerent denial. We find that no one need have difficulty with the spirituality of the program. Willingness, honesty and open-mindedness are the essentials of recovery. But these are indispensable. So in other words, honesty, open-mindedness are the essentials. And they are indispensable. There is a principle which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. Herbert Spencer. So, yeah, I wasn't brought up with religion, except a, a feeling that it was not going to be good for me, and that was by my father and his life experiences, which turned him away from religion very quickly. Uh, two world wars adopted being preached to, being put down, being made fearful and generally trampled on by the establishment which includes religious religious outlooks I guess always an outcast so how did I ever get to a place where I could even consider spiritual well of course spiritual may have religious connotations if that is the way faith works for you but again, spiritual is, as an ecclesiastical person said, the ability to cope with now. But that doesn't actually matter if you don't believe. Good conscience is improved and wisdom is improved if we can be open, honest and willing to change. So the, the word God doesn't make me fearful or resentful anymore. Why should it? it's a word about something which I am not I'm not God so I'm a learner and I like being a learner it means with humility learning I keep on learning how to live life and making mistakes is part of what goes on if I were to shut down be closed and shameful about mistakes made then I wouldn't get any further I keep on burrowing away inside trying to work it out but I found especially with the spiritual experience 
being open minded, honest and willing, I get a better chance of living this one day and letting everything in. I, I still need to sort out what will work for me and how to develop wisdom and skill of living. Certainly without a drink it's been a, a lot easier and very rare these days do I find myself in a, a bit of a angry temper because I know what I can and cannot do. Anyway, uh, expectations clearly can undermine my serenity. If I expect too much, either of myself or other people, or I expect that they would apply the same, same considerations as I do, I will get resentful and angry because I am very considerate. I am. I know that. Or I would have had great arguments for years and years and years about all the things I do, but I don't. It's a rare occasion where somebody uh, pushes my buttons and I get angry and resentful. What a shock for me. Anyway, that's me, how am I, how am I feeling? Better for the spiritual experience and being reminded of it. Other years, humility is described as not proud or haughty, not arrogant false pride and righteousness, grandiosity, egotistical, telling, in, telling anyone what to do. I need to remind myself, experience is my teacher, pride in all its forms can block me from God or simply good conscience and it can block me from the truth, love and wisdom of others today. So if I feel hurt, isolated, shut down, close the curtains, turn the phone off and not respond or react to anything. I'm not going to get anywhere, am I? I just live in the dark. And another thought from previous years, growing up about growing up all about being right, winning the argument, material success, usual, using people and judging them, turning human relations into resources, human relations into resources, utilities. You know, what can I get out of them? This is the thing that I often see now which can upset me. Whoever thought that a department which was called personnel should then be named human resources, putting people down to the level of another resource. It takes out the uh, the human side. I'm putting the two things together, human resources in one way actually is an oxymoron because you take the humanity out of the resource when you call it a human resource. It was better called personnel but maybe people in personnel didn't like to be called personnel. I don't know. I don't know now either. Using and being used, always against the grain in, and my inner being. I broke, yeah I did break down in the end because of the way people were treated around me in business caused me great consternation and a two-year anxiety state. In recovery, learning to love and be loved, equal and useful today, is I guess where it works best for me. So how would I have been able to say these things? And I've gone on for quite a while. How would I have been able to actually understand life and still being alive to be able to experience truth, love and wisdom? How to love, be loved, back and useful? How to have a relationship? with a lovely woman, girl, I like to call women girls because I'm still growing up too and to appreciate the beauty of life. How could I have got to this stage after a few years? I mean it was tough at the beginning, Don't please don't underestimate how tough it is to give up an addiction or rather just to be in recovery one day at a time and the absolute genuine authentic feelings that we get in recovery. We're learning our feelings as we go. Learning that we can be pushed to extremes still in recovery means that we are indeed human and not robotic, not some sort of production line resource ready to do whatever we think we ought to do. We actually get ready to do with freedom of choice what we like to do within reason and knowing economy is part of it. So realistic always. The serenity prayer helps me any given day. And boy do I need it some days. The can do, can't do. When to walk away, even though to stay 
they say flight or fight sometimes both are extremes but sometimes there is nothing we can do which is going to be helpful when we're faced with righteousness our own righteousness and the righteousness of another person locking horns I guess is not the way so to God or good conscience the serenity prayer for me this is it God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change I cannot change anything much around people places and things courage to change the things I can that's me and my attitudes and approaches and the wisdom to know the difference and the wisdom to know the difference is hopefully in the moment of now but sometimes a little bit after when I've cooled down or warmed up again from wherever I've got to and so grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference always for me right now hopefully and just for today